How do I look? I'm so nervous. Come on, we gonna be late! Yeah, this is my first time ever doing something on this type of scale. But here goes nothing. Welcome back, y'all. D Wood, Holistic Life Coach. This is the Who Am I series. This is everything you've all been waiting for. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about who I am, my life experiences, why I moved to Kansas, a little bit about what you can do with the information that I give you this week, as well as what we're gonna talk about next week. So everybody knows as a human being, you're gonna experience some kind of emotional dissonance in your life. You know what I'm talking about, that struggle, those barriers, those challenges that I can't get out of bed in the morning, all those types of things. I'm gonna be here today to give you all that information and tips and strategies and things like that that you can use to get past that, to use that in the future. As we know, life repeats itself. We go through things over and over again. We're not sad just one time. We're not mad just one time. It happens again. But what are we gonna do to be able to get past it even better the next time and the next time after that? So, you tired, fed up with your life? Follow me, D.Wood, the Holistic Life Coach. On YouTube, follow me on Instagram, The Real D Wood. Let's talk about success. Success is gonna look different to everybody. You have to define your own success, what that looks like to you, what you want your lifestyle to be in five, 10 years, how available you wanna to be to your family, how available you wanna to be to your friends, things like that, what you wanna do in your spare time, where you wanna travel, things like that. Information I'm gonna be giving y'all is gonna be able to use in all aspects of your life. When we're talking about mental health and wellness, positive thinking, goal setting, things like that. Other psychological barriers that I've even struggled with in Kansas, depression, anxiety, things like that. We also deal with stress and addiction all the time. Little things that we don't know that we're addicted to, like our phones, social media, eating, not eating, things like that. All these things we need to recognize about ourselves to be able to move and get to that level of success and get past these barriers that we think are stopping us. All right, who am I? My name is David Wood, 27 years old, from North Metro Atlanta, Georgia. Three things I believe I was raised on. We're gonna talk about respect and how that's important. Positive thinking and how you can change that in your daily routine, as well as commitment. Some of us like that. I've even liked that in my past. So respect. Respect is somebody, something that's going to take you all a long way. I don't think you guys are hearing me. Respect is going to be something that is going to take you all a long way. It's going to be a reflection of your character at school, at work, amongst your friends and family. People don't have to earn their respect with you. Just give them that respect. It's going to show a lot better in your character and things like that. Positive thinking. It takes just as much energy as it does to be negative as it does to be positive. So remember that when you're sitting in bed or sitting at home or sitting at work and you're being negative and you're hating what you're doing, hating how your day is going, things like that. Think about all the things that you're thankful for. Think about all the things that are going well in your life. Change your way of thinking. That's going to be the preface to a lot of things that we talk about is the power of your mind and what you can do to change that into a positive way. Commitment. That's something we all struggle with. A lot of us have problems with large commitments or small commitments. That is something that is going to be a positive result in what you do every day. Being committed to something shows how determined you are, how dedicated you are, and will result in positive results if you show your commitment and how strong you are to that. So stay tuned. D. Wood, The Holistic Life Coach. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Next is going to be discipline. Discipline is a skill that I picked up running track and field. That's something I did starting in about fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade. Um, I ran for about nine to ten years, got a track scholarship, ran my freshman year of high school, but had to stop running because of my knees. I'm sure a lot of you all can relate to being an athlete, injuries and things like that, and what it can kind of do to your pride and your passion about things. I've always wanted to work with people. That's something that I picked up in high school, being involved in churches as, as a youth and things like that. Um, so that's going to be the preface for why I'm here, why I do a lot of the things that I do, my experiences that I've been through. It's because of my passion and care for people. So I want you to know that I care about you. I want you to know that I'm here for you. Everything that I'm doing is to ensure that you all succeed and take the tips and strategies that I've learned through my success and implement them in your life and hopefully can make a difference. 2011, I moved to Kansas. Hated it. 
just the worst decision that I thought I could ever make. My first year, I got kicked out of school. Yeah, I got kicked out of K-State for grades. I moved up here, I was depressed, taking out of my urban environment and placed in this rural town that I couldn't really even fathom why I was here. Couldn't understand why I couldn't walk outside and see people that look like me, do the things that I do, eat at the places that I've eaten, things like that. So the comfortability level and things that I had to learn to be comfortable in a place of dissonance is what I'm going to also teach you all. So we all going to go through change. We're all going to go through these different barriers and challenges in our life. But what are you going to do for yourself to make the difference? Not what somebody can do for you. What are you going to do for yourself to make that difference? After I got kicked out of school, didn't give up. Went back to Manhattan Area Technical College. It's right down the street from Kansas State University. Spent a year and a half there. I took classes, did everything that I could to ensure that when I went back to K-State, I would graduate with my degree. Let's fast forward to 2014. Enrolled back in K-State, spring. Got into the social work program. Two years after that, I graduated with my social work degree. I'm sorry, my social work degree. A lot of my friends and family can't understand why I've been out in Kansas so long. Well, this is what I've been doing, going through my struggles, going through my challenges, but still moving forward, still having a sense of purpose, sense of pride, and not letting all my challenges and barriers and things like that break me down. Once I graduated with my social work degree, I knew that I still wanted to work with people, but being a student, I started to love the college environment. Sports, the people, always having something to do, all the events, all the different kinds of cultures and things that you can be introduced to. So that led to my master's in education. This is gonna deal with student, I'm sorry, special education, counseling and student affairs. So I've counseled, I've counseled students, I've worked in special education, and I've also worked in student affairs and what goes into working with students and how they progress through working um, in higher education or whether it's high school and things like that. So I wanna make sure I touch on all the developmental pieces that you can either talk with your kids about or talk with your friends about or even implementing your own life as a student. And it doesn't matter if you're a non-traditional student. By non-traditional, I mean somebody who isn't a typical 18 to 20 year old, 22 year old, somebody who has an established life, maybe an established family. Those are those people that I'm talking about as non-traditional. But we all are gonna face some of the similar things that I want you all to know that you're not alone. We all face the same challenges just in different ways, but there are tips and strategies and things that you can do to get past that. Now I'm gonna to talk to you all about a little bit of the experiences I've had, both personal life experience as well as professional experience or work experience, as some of you wanna call it. So I started off at Bergman Elementary here in Kansas and I was working in special education. At that point, I got a different sense of life, a different perspective and more of appreciation, you know, working with these students who don't have the same privileges as us in the sense of being able to walk and talk and speak and breathe and eat without being aided in some kind of way. So every day, it just made me feel a little bit more appreciative of my life. And a lot of you all don't appreciate what you have in your life. So let me challenge you this week to work on your appreciation of life. Appreciate the things that you maybe have looked over, like being able to go to work, being able to have a car, being able to eat, being able to have a roof over your head and things like that. Um, recognizing that some people in this life don't have that and they are also still being dedicated to what they do. So there's no excuse for the people who have all these privileges and still are not being successful or not moving through life in a positive manner. Next is going to be Boys and Girls Club. So I've worked with many ages, both from kindergarten all the way up to high school, but I really focused on teens. And the reason why I focused on teens is because at that point in your life, I feel like you're competent and you're able to instill different values in yourself that, you know, may be different from your parents or something like that. So I feel like that's a very impactful stage in your life. And so Job Corps, that's where I worked with 16 to 24 year olds. These students came from all over Kansas, some of them in Missouri, and they also came from different backgrounds, maybe white, black, Indian, Latino, um, maybe even from a reservation and things like that. So all those different identities are a factor in, in who you are and how you 
play a factor into life and how you move through your daily daily decisions, your daily routine and things like that. Also, the people you encounter and what that looks like to them. But be proud of who you are. Be proud of where you're from. Be proud of what you do, the culture you represent, because all of that is going to be a reflection of your character. And I challenge you to be different. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. That's something I'm also going to talk about in this Who Am I series, what it's like to be a leader. I consider myself a leader. You should do the same. All right. K-State, I started working as an academic transition program. These were students who were struggling, just like I talked about before I got kicked out of K-State. These are students on warning, not making the correct GPAs to, to be successful. I also moved into academic coaching. This is going to be very different from your typical advisor because we talk about everything that affects you going through school, not just your graduation plan. So anything from depression to family issues to child issues to strategies to tips and stress and, and testing and things like that. I mean, just di a different array of things that are also going to be impactful and helpful for you that you all may have experienced in your life or going through, going through work or going through um, college and things like that. So three things that I talked about before that I was raised on, the respect, the positive thinking, commitment. As I've gotten older, I've recognized more identities of myself and I became dedicated. I became disciplined and I also became optimistic. I wouldn't be here today if I was not optimistic about my abilities and different things that people had to offer. All right. So I'm telling you, I felt my calling when I felt like I needed to make a difference in others lives. This is where I didn't know if I wanted to be an athlete. I didn't know if I wanted to sit behind a desk my whole life. But at some point, I knew I wanted to make a difference in somebody's lives. And as I've gone through college, I knew that I wanted to start with students. All right. So when I ask myself, who am I and what I can do to others? I want to be able to inspire you to be the best possible self you can be. I want you to reach your greatest potential. I want you to say that there's nothing in your way. There's nothing going to stop me from reaching my max potential, my max goal or whatever it is in that life that you want to achieve. I consider myself a holistic life coach. I want to talk to you all about your mind, your body, your spirit. It's all going to go into how you move through your daily routine. All right. I'm an educator, a mentor. I've been in school a very long time. I've had a lot of people look up to me. I'm also a brother. I'm also a son. I have mentored a lot of people and hopefully I can make a difference in your life and your friends' lives and your family. So please share this information that I'm giving you all. Also, I talked about being a leader. When you're a leader, you also have to advocate for people. Doesn't matter if they're white, black, female, male, gay, lesbian, it doesn't matter. We all have to advocate for somebody because that, that one community, that one person, they cannot do it alone. They need somebody to help them get to where they want to be. I didn't do this alone. I had friend, family. I had friends. I had mentors. I had people that believed in me to get to where I am. So this leads me to my last thing. I believe I'm a visionary, an optimist. Again, being optimistic, visionary, looking into the future, being able to be innovative in what you think about, what you talk about, and how you adapt to the daily challenges and struggles that people have that are forever changing. One thing that I love about my job and, and my profession and, and my skills that I never know what's going to walk through my door. I always know that I have the skill set to hopefully conquer anything that I face. But at the end of the day, it's suspenseful. It's great. So I want to now talk to you about how you can become more encouraged, become more self-aware, and that is going to be through following me at my YouTube channel, D.Wood, The Holistic Life Coach. Please ask me any questions throughout this week. I've talked about a lot of things today. I want you guys to watch this video. I want you to share it. I want you to really self-reflect and understand what it means to have your own identity. Be self-efficient, be successful, be positive, be encouraging, be that leader, be that mentor to somebody, all right? Let's talk about next week. Next week, 
we're going to talk about being your best possible self. I'm going to have a lot of different factors and components that are going to lead into that. So stay tuned. There's going to be four things that I talk about that can make you successful when being paired with the other components of being your best possible self. So next week, I'm going to be coming at you with this video and the following weeks after that. So look forward to a great summer. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things to uplift you, inspire you, make sure you believe in yourself. And again, I thank you for all your support and appreciate all of you. Again, subscribe to my YouTube channel, D. Wood, the Holistic Life Coach, as well as follow me on Instagram, The Real D. Wood. Again, thank you for all your support.